Hi there, I'm Beth. This week I want to share some kind of thrifty smart doll crafts with you. For those who follow the smart doll news, you'll know that the creator, Danny Chu, was just in the US at the Anime NYC convention. I wish I could have been there to meet him and my friends Sandy and John of My Lady Disdain. I had to settle for looking at his photos instead and this one caught my eye. It shows a display of beer coolers in the shape of little jackets. Now I've seen these novelty coolers before and have been very tempted to buy them to see if they could work as a doll prop. I've had this mini tactical beer vest in my shopping cart for ages and I finally decided to buy not only that, but also this orange beer cooler jacket. And while I was browsing, saw this beer bottle shaped sleeping bag too. I bought all three and figured it'd make a fun little smart doll upcycling project. And here they all are. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> Let's start with the obvious. The sleeping bag was never going to fit a smart doll inside it. But with all these cute details and padded sections, I figured it could be rolled up and added onto a backpack as a convincing camping prop. But I do have lots of other dolls that might fit this, so let's try a couple out. Here's a midi-sized Blythe doll. She had a pretty big head, but looks the right size. Take off her hat. Hmm, <laughs> not quite. The narrow shape at the top here looks wrong, but she is cozy in there. Here's Lika Chan. She's got the same body size as a Neo Blythe, but a smaller head, more like a Barbie doll. Hey, that's pretty good. Her head fits up and into the top part. Nice. Well, if you want to take Lika Chan out camping, here's a sleeping bag for her, ready made. Anyway, for my beyond Haru here, I'll add on a couple of straps to attach the rolled up sleeping bag to a backpack and see if that works out. There's the jacket shaped cooler. It'll need some alterations to get it to be a functioning smart doll jacket, but I have high hopes it'll work. It has a functioning zip and a foiled lining. There's no interior holes for the sleeves. It's just a cylinder. The sleeves look like they're hollow though and might work once the ends are unpicked from these pockets. The bottom is round and just needs unpicking too. Hmm, yeah, it looks like it might fit. And here's the tactical vest. This one looks like it'll be the easiest. It's all held together with Velcro and straps. These bits can come right off and the shoulders and sides look like they'll be fairly adjustable. Let's see if it'll fit her. I've removed the Sequoia jacket that I made for her, sewing tutorial here. And I'll just try to wrap the two halves together, keeping the Velcro away from her hair, get the shoulders evenly spaced, and then close in the sides. Haru here has the default bust, I figure it'll fit this or an even smaller bust the best, since it's made up of flat shapes. But yeah, I'm convinced. What do you think? This could have been made for Smart Doll. If you had more props, you could add Velcro lettering or clip things to the straps too. I'll keep these aside for the sleeping bag straps later. I think this is a great ready-made addition to a military-themed outfit. Let's see if the jacket still fits. Yeah, I think she looks pretty good. Definitely a thumbs up from me. I'm moving on to the sleeping bag now, and I've looked out a few different widths of woven tape, something like a heavy ribbon. I think I'll reuse these two pieces from the vest and we'll run the straps through them. I'll go for this wider strapping since I have plenty of it. Here I've looked out some small D-rings too. I'll use them to hang the bag from the backpack. I want to shout out my friends Enchantarium and their awesome smart doll patterns. I've tested out a couple of patterns for them and really enjoyed making this cute backpack. Link is in the description to try it yourself. When I made some alterations to my second bag here, I made the shoulder straps wider and added buckles to them too. 
This will now allow me to open them up and slip on the D-rings. I think I'll fold in the long edges of this strapping to fit the D-rings better and we'll then sew on Velcro to enable it to close into a loop. Here, hopefully you can see that and next I'll add the Velcro. There. Now I can slip on these decorative bits and put it all together. I do really want to design and make a bigger backpack sometime, like a proper camping backpack. If you already have one like that for your smart dolls, you might be able to strap on the sleeping bag to it directly, maybe at the top. For now though, this works for Haru. She's the toughest of my smart dolls and is ready to camp out and defend herself if needed. There we go. Let's see it on her too. Oh yeah, it looks like it could be a full-sized sleeping bag to me. I think it fits really nicely. What do you think? Oh, how embarrassing. I showed Haru to my husband Craig and he pointed out that these uh, stab vests are supposed to be worn over the top of the jacket, not underneath. Thankfully, it still fits her really well and it looks even better now. She has her wrench and her pocket knife at the ready too, ready for the zombie apocalypse. Well, she's looking great, but I have one more upcycling project to take on today this mini jacket beer cooler. I'll need the seam ripper for this, but need to find out where to start from. I flip it inside out and spot the manufacturer's closing seam here at the back. I'll open it up and carefully remove this silver lining. Here's the bottom, mostly removed enough to flip it through and unpick the main body lining. Here they are. I'll keep the body lining piece to use as a template for a cotton lining later on. Now we see the jacket without lining and I'll next remove the lower circle piece. There it is. And looking at the zip, it's not going to be long enough once a new trim is added, so I'll be removing it. I'll also unpick the sleeves from the pockets, so we can see if an arm will fit in here. Here's my zip, and the sleeves are loose. They're in a permanent banana shape now, of course. I'll have to sew these pocket flaps back down too, but it's looking promising. Let's try it on. Here's North volunteering to try it on for now, and I can see a few issues. With her hands removed, I was able to get the sleeves on, but they're not long enough. They'll definitely need to be extended. And North is sporting the medium smooth bust, which is too big for this jacket to close. So I'll use a different model next time. It's pretty close though. So next I'll add some new cuffs and a lower hem and see how it looks then. Oh, I did think maybe you could reuse some of the fabric from this bottom piece, but not this time. I want to try adding some knit rib to the sleeves and hem. I considered these different fabrics from pre-worn clothing, but opted for this new green knit rib that I bought in Berlin. I think it'll look good with the bright orange. Here you see I've unpicked a little more of the sleeve, the underside, so the sleeve will open out enough for me to get the extension in there. I've cut two pieces around eight by 20 centimeters, folded in half to be 10 centimeters long, but I think that's probably too wide. Here I'm aligning the raw edges together, right sides in, and will sew on the extension just like a regular cuff. Here it's sewn and I was right, it's too wide. I'll cut off the excess, no problem. I think six centimetres might have been enough. I'll flip it out and sew up the side seam to close the sleeve. 
I'll turn it out the right way now. <laughs> that bendy arm, but it looks like a full length sleeve now. So let's repeat that for the other side. There we go. And now I'll sew on a long narrow piece of the knit rib to the bottom hem. Once it's on and flipped out, I'll reattach a lining layer. I'll use this piece as a template, but I'll have to add in some armholes. It's looking better with that hem done. I also restitched down those pocket flaps too. I tucked in each end of the hem so it wouldn't look unfinished. And I'm going to push the seam allowance up and tuck the excess of the jacket round to the inside. This will give a neat looking front. Then I can add on this new zip. It's a fully opening zip at the bottom too. Here it is sewn in and I'll just cut off the excess zip from the top and tuck it in as I sew in the lining. Here's how I'm tackling the lining, keeping it really simple and just cutting a slit with V's at each end to be folded out and top stitched. Here they're both top stitched and I'll fold in the seam allowance as I hand stitch all the way around the lining. While I sew, let me say thank you to my patrons. Their additional support really helps with the upkeep of our website and shop and allows me to try out projects like this guilt-free. There we go. The lining fits nicely and it looks like a proper little jacket. Yeah, it's boxy and the sleeves are like bananas, but let's see how it looks on. I did say I'd use a different model, but let's see the fit over North's bust with the zipper in. What do you think of the look? I can get past the half and half sleeves and believe it was a design choice. Maybe you could find a better match for the color. The length is good though, and the jacket body looks good as well. <laughs> yeah, that zip isn't going to close, but you get the idea. Let's see it on the default bust. Here's my Marceline now. The beer cooler jacket zips up nicely and looks pretty cute on her. We can see a bit of tummy. She's wearing jeans that I made from the free CJ trousers pattern. I'm really pleased with this for an adapted novelty beer cooler. Oh, and I guess I have one more upcycle to mention. Her hat is simply made from the cuff end of a one pound pair of socks. I cut it long to allow the edge to be flipped up and hand stitched a running stitch around the cut end. I pulled it tight and went round it a few times to secure. You could apply fray check or fabric glue maybe to prevent flyaways, but it's super simple. Pick a sock with some patterning and it'll look even better. I'll leave you with some fun final shots of my girls modeling their new duds. I really hope you enjoyed all these mini projects today. How many of you are smart doll owners? I've been thinking about them a lot lately. We have a few smart doll projects and products in the works, so be sure to subscribe with notifications so you don't miss future announcements. I'd love to know what you thought of today's video in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye.